Admiral, and that's really what we're here to talk about today. Speaker Johnson's going to be briefing you on what we discussed, what we agree on. But uh, I would like to demand that our border be closed because we have millions of people coming into our country. Millions and millions of people are pouring in at levels that nobody's reporting, nobody's going to talk about. But I believe you could have 15 million already in. Some are terrorists. They come from uh, jails and prisons. They come from mental institutions and insane asylums. They come from all over the world, not just South America. They're coming from all over the world. Venezuela announced that their crime is down 67 percent because of the fact that they've taken the gang members, the leaders and the members, and they've deposited them very nicely into the United States of America. That's just Venezuela. Uh, it's happening with the Congo. It's happening with countries all over Africa, Asia, South America, all over the world it's happening. Our country is like a dumping ground, and we're going to have it stopped. And Biden should do it immediately. He should close the border immediately. He needs no legislation. He doesn't need this gentleman. He doesn't need anybody. He can do it. I did it without any legislation. I had the best border we've had in ever recorded history. He can close it immediately. If he would have left, we, we had stay in Mexico, remain in Mexico. We had catch and release in Mexico, not here. We had everything. It was perfect. It was a great a great situation we had, and now we have the worst ever. I don't believe in the history of the world there's been a border like this. But we probably have 15 million people, and they come from places that you don't want to know about, and they're going to be big problems, and it's getting worse. It's migrant crime. It's a new category of crime, migrant crime. And I'm just demanding, I just demand, as a citizen, I demand, the border has to be closed. Our country cannot take it. No country could take it. It's not sustainable by any country. And uh, we want to also mention election interference, and we want to talk about election integrity for a little while. But basically, that's what we're working on. And uh, I'll introduce the speaker, who you know very well. He's doing a, a really good job under very tough circumstances. And I appreciate he came to Mar-a-Lago. We have a great conference. and. There's a big turnout because people want this to be healed. They want our country to be healed. They want our country to be united. And I think most people are united on the fact that they don't want people pouring in from prisons and jails and mental institutions. They don't want that to happen. They don't want it to take place. And it's not going to happen for long. And that's why I say that November 5th is going to be the most important day in the history of our country. That's the election. It's going to be the most important day in the history of our country. Thank you very much. And, Speaker, thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. President, and it's good to see you all. Uh, we're so uh, delighted to be here with our former and future president uh, in this beautiful facility. Mar-a-Lago is famous around the country, and we're uh, grateful to be here. Uh, the, with President Trump as our nominee in the party, we are very much looking forward to that historic day in November because we are going to grow the House majority, we're going to win the United States Senate, and we're going to win back the White House as well. The American people need us to do that. They're excited for that day in November, cannot get here soon enough. Uh, the Speaker of the House, when we're not in session, uh, the Speaker is required to go around, fly around the country, and be with all of our candidates and incumbents all around. Uh, I've been to, I think, 23 states now in the last several weeks, and everywhere we go, one of the first questions that people ask about is this issue of election integrity. The border is the number one issue in America. There's never been a political issue. Uh, that, that scored so high in the polls is a matter of concern. And it doesn't matter where anyone lives, because as we say now, every state is a border state. Uh, they're deeply concerned about that. And election integrity is tied to border, the lack of border security. President Biden has created a catastrophe, and he did it by design. We documented 64 specific executive actions that he took from the day he walked into the Oval Office and that his agencies took under Secretary Mayorkas to open the border wide, to invite everybody from around the world to come here, including hardened criminals and dangerous persons. And the result, we all know. The official number is 9 million encounters at the southern border alone, just since Joe Biden took office. But the actual number is probably close to 16 million illegals who have come into the country because they desired it. They designed it. They engineered it to be that way. His actions did that. He, he ended the uh, Remain in Mexico policy under President Trump's administration. They reinstated catch and release that had uh, been uh, practiced under the Obama administration. They, they stopped building the wall. They did everything exactly the opposite of what this president had achieved. And that's why we have this catastrophe. It has all sorts of terrible effects on the American people. 
we know that fentanyl is a leading cause of death for Americans age 18 to 49. We know that violent crimes are being committed on innocent Americans now, Lake and Riley and many others, who are now losing their lives because these dangerous people are in our country, and it must stop. And the American people are demanding that it does. And it doesn't matter which political party that any American is in. They have the same desire. They want safety and security, and we can supply that. But among the problems that flows from this open border catastrophe is directly related to this threat to our election integrity. Why is that? You need to understand something really important about federal law. Since 1993, the, the, the National Voter Registration Act, we call it the, the Motor Voter Law, allows people to sign up to vote when they get a driver's license. Uh, if an individual only asserts or simply states that they are a citizen, they don't have to prove it. They can register that person to vote in a federal election. And you see states are currently prohibited Believe it or not, the states are prohibited from asking someone to prove that they're a citizen. It, it, the, the federal voter registration form just has a check a box, and if you do that, you're good. The states can't allow it. Well, we think that's a serious problem. And so what we're going to do is the House Republicans are introducing a bill that will require proof of citizenship to vote. It, it seems like common sense. I'm sure all of us would agree we only want U.S. citizens to vote in U.S. elections. But there are some Democrats who don't want to do that. Uh, we believe that one of their designs, one of the reasons for this open border, which everybody asks all around the country, why would they do this? Why would they allow all this chaos? Why the violence? Because they want to turn these people into voters. Right now, the administration is encouraging illegals to go to their local welfare office to sign up for benefits. Well, guess what? When you go to a, a welfare office, they also ask you if you would like to register to vote. And so many people, we think, are going to do that. And you know what? It, the numbers are so high, there's so many millions of illegals in the country, that if only one out of a hundred voted, they would cast potentially hundreds of thousands of votes in the election. That could turn an election. This, this could be a, a tight election in, in our congressional races around the country. It could, if there are enough votes, affect the presidential election. And so that's why House Republicans are going to act. I'm, I'm going to announce to you today uh, here standing alongside President Trump, that we will do everything within our power to ensure that we do have free and fair elections in this country. If we don't have that in a constitutional republic, we have nothing. It's the basis of who we are as a nation, and we owe that to the American people. And so what we're going to do is introduce legislation to require that every single person who registers to vote in a federal election must prove that they're an American citizen first. They have to prove it. That will be a new uh, uh, part of the federal law and a very important one. Our bill will establish new safeguards. It will put us on par, by the way, with virtually every other democracy around the world that also prohibits non-citizen voting. And, and this is a, a, a critical thing for us to do at a, at a very critical time. Our bill also will require states to remove non-citizens from their existing voter rolls. That's a big problem, too. And, and it will provide access to databases from the Department of Homeland Security and the Social Security Administration to help the states administer this. At, 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 as the entity that is responsible for regulating federal elections, Congress has this responsibility. We cannot wait for widespread fraud to occur, uh, to occur uh, especially when the threat of fraud is growing with every single illegal immigrant that crosses that border. This is something most Americans are deeply concerned about. The latest poll says 78% of the Americans who are polled say that preventing illegal immigrants from voting in our elections is a top priority. I've, in every place I've gone around the country, whether it's out west, midwest, Long Island, deep south, it doesn't matter. Everybody is concerned about this. We have a job to do. Here's what you need to look for, and I'll turn it back to the president. When we put this bill on the floor, you're going to see a record vote by Republicans and Democrats. You'll see that the Republicans stand for election integrity. And then we'll be able to ask this very important question of the Democrats. They're going to have to go on record. Do you believe the, the, that Americans and Americans alone should be the ones who vote in American elections? We're about to find out their answer. And I think that will be a very interesting one uh, for, for everybody to see. Mr. President, thank you again for uh, hosting us today. I'll turn it back thank to you. you. Very much. Yes, sir. Thank, thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, do you have any questions? <laughs> We're getting along very well with the speaker, and I get along very well with Marjorie. Uh, we have a speaker. Uh, he was voted in, and it was a complicated process, and uh, I think very 
uh, it's not uh, not an easy situation for any speaker. I think he's doing a very good job. He's doing uh, about as good as you're going to do. And uh, I'm sure that Marjorie understands that. She's a very good friend of mine. And I know she has a lot of respect for the speaker. And do you, do you support a Ukrainian aid bill if the speaker was to move forward with it? We're looking at it right now, and they're talking about it. And we're thinking about making it in the form of a loan instead of just a gift. We keep handing out gifts of billions and billions of dollars, and we'll take a look at it. But much more importantly to me is the fact that Europe has to step up and they have to give money. We, They have to equalize. If they don't equalize, I'm very upset about it because they're affected much more than we are. The Ukraine situation would have never happened if I was president. Would have never, ever happened. And everybody says that, including Democrats, that it happened is such an outrage. People, millions of people are dead right now, both sides. Millions of people are dead. Uh, cities are blown to ashes. You'll never rebuild those cities. That's certainly not like they were so beautiful. And this is something should have never happened. October 7th should have never happened in Israel. Should have never happened. What happened there was outrageous. Iran was broke when I was president. People weren't buying oil from Iran. They weren't allowed to. If they were going to buy oil from Iran, then they weren't going to do any business in the U.S. And I said it to China. I said it to everybody. They weren't doing business. They were broke. They didn't have money for Hamas. They didn't have money for Hezbollah. It would have never happened. October 7th would have never happened. It did happen. And now it's a disaster. And it's only getting worse. So uh, it's, uh, it's very sad. No, I stand with the speaker. We've had a very good relationship. <laughs> While you were in office, you said that you would sign a federal abortion ban if Congress sent it to your desk. Why should Americans trust your word that you would not do it now if you were reelected? Because we don't need it any longer, because we broke Roe v. Wade, and we did something that nobody thought was possible. We gave it back to the states, and the states are working very brilliantly, in some cases conservative, in some cases not conservative, but they're working, and it's uh, working the way it's supposed to. Every legal scholar, real legal scholar, wanted to have it go back to the states, Democrat, Republican, liberal, conservative, and we we're able to do that. You know, what we did was give it back to the states, and now the states are working their way through it. And you're going, you're having some very, very beautiful harmony, to be honest with you. You have, well, you have some cases like Arizona that went back to like 1864 or something like that, and a judge made a ruling, but that's going to be changed by government. They're going to be changing that. I disagree with that. <laughs> Excuse me, please. Just a, a follow-up. Over the, over the last few decades, Mr. President, you have both considered yourself pro-choice and pro-life. Which one is it? Well, you know exactly which one it is. And when I was in New York and when I was a Democrat also, just like Ronald Reagan. You know, Ronald Reagan was a Democrat. We sort of followed a very similar path. But if you look at what we've done with Roe v. Wade, we did something that everyone said couldn't be done, and we got it done. And I give great credit to the Supreme Court and the, the justices for having the courage to do it. What they did is very simply give it back to the state. And I'll tell you, the Democrats are the radicals on this because they're willing to have abortions in the seventh, eighth, ninth month. They're even willing, and you can call it what you want, but you go back to the governor of Virginia, the previous governor of Virginia, the Democrat governor of Virginia, where he talked about execution of a baby after birth. And you can say what you want, but that's extreme and that's radical, and nobody should have that, and it has to be ended. Please, go ahead. Go ahead, please. Thank you, sir. Mr. President, do you think the motion to vacate rules should be finally changed, or do you think that it's just creating chaos right now? Well, it's unfortunate that people bring it up because right now we have much bigger problems. The country is a — we're a nation in decline. We're a declining nation. We have tremendous inflation. The inflation's coming back at levels that nobody thought they really would have. Uh, if you look at the categories of inflation, they have the worst categories. Many categories are not included. And if you included that, your inflation number would be substantially higher than it is now, and it's already at records. So inflation is back. And a lot of bad things are happening in our country, but that's the least of it. You've got Russia could end up in — you could end up in a world war between Russia, Ukraine, and all of the chaos, and that's something should have never happened. It would have never happened. What's going on with Israel, October 7th, and what's going on with Israel could end up in a world war. 
We have a president that can't put two sentences together. We have a president that can't find the stairs off a stage. We have a president that doesn't know what the hell he's doing. And we could end up in a world war. You know, we have just a little bit less than seven months now, months before November 5th. But that's an eternity when people are incompetent. <laughs> Go ahead, please. Do you support the House's FISA bill that was passed this morning? Which one? Pfizer bill, and did you talk to anyone? Well, I'm not a big fan of Pfizer. I looked at it, and I studied it, and I know it probably better than anybody. You know, they spied on my campaign. You do know that, right? And they did lots of other bad things. I'm not a big fan of Pfizer, but I told everybody, I said, do what you want. They put a lot of checks and balances on, and I guess it's uh, down to two years now, so that it would come due in the early part of my administration on the uh, on the basis that we live up to the polls, because all the polls, we just had another one come out. We're leading by a lot, but it comes out quickly. I said, you do what you want, but I'm not a big fan of Pfizer. I think it's terrible. Yeah, Bob? Do you plan to testify, you plan to testify in your trial in New York? Yeah, I would testify, absolutely. It's a scam. It's a scam. That's not a trial. That's not a trial. That's a scam. If you read Jonathan Turley, if you read Andy McCarthy, if you le read the legal, they said there's not even a case there. That's election interference by the Biden administration. They actually took their top guy, one of their top guys, put him into the DA's office to run it, and it's a shame. What they have done is incredible. It's election interference, and it's got to stop. It's a third world country. This country's never done it. But you read Jonathan Turley, you read Andrew McCarthy, you read the legal scholars, Every single one of them said that whole thing is a scam. It's not even a crime. And what they're doing is a crime. They are criminals. All right, Bob? Can I just follow up on that? Why do you believe it is important for you to testify, take the stand in this upcoming trial? And what are you watching as jury selection begins yeah. in New York? Well, you know, jury selection is largely luck. It depends who you get. It's very unfair that I'm having a trial there. It's very unfair that we have this judge who hates Trump and has tremendous conflict, as you know, tremendous conflict. Nobody can believe that this judge isn't recusing himself. The conflict is at a level that nobody's ever seen before. So I have that, and I have venue. We have all these things that we've asked for. They don't give us anything. It's a witch hunt that takes place in New York, and that is taking place, and it's very bad for New York, and it's very bad, and it's very bad for the judicial system in New York. I don't know. I'm testifying. I tell the truth. I mean, all I can do is tell the truth. And the truth is that there's no case. They have no case. And again, you have to read the scholars, read all of the legal scholars. I haven't seen one legal scholar that said this is a case. And in fact, even you people said, oh, gee, that's too bad. This is the first one. All of them are scams. They're all about election interference. We have a, we have a president that doesn't know where he is. He can't speak. The whole world is collapsing. The world is on fire. They have no respect for our country anymore. And the only way he thinks he can win is by doing this, you know, trials of Trump. We have Fawny in Atlanta, who's been so discredited now. That was a setup with her boyfriend so they could take trips and take a lot of money out. And that's something that should be dismissed. Not just the prosecutor dismissed, the case should be dismissed. Every single one of them said, look at what happened with Biden. He gets off scot-free with 50 years of documents and classified information. He gets off scot-free. And I'm still fighting that trial. Uh, the whole thing is a disgrace, and it's a disgrace to our nation. According to both U.S. and Israeli intelligence reports, yeah. um, have you spoken with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu? Yeah. How should the United States respond? And the same question for you, Mr. Speaker. I don't want to say who I spoke to, but for the president of our country to actually put out a warning that he thinks that we're going to be attacked or they're going to be attacked, that's pretty pathetic. They wouldn't be attacking Israel if I were president, that I can tell you, and they never did. They wouldn't be attacking. Iran was in no position to attack. They had no money. They were broke. But now they have $221 billion, and they have Iraq, who has $300 billion, and Iraq has become a subsidiary of Iran. With all that we've done, with all of the fighting, all of the death, look at what happened, how incompetent the whole thing is. But I don't want to say who I spoke to, but I think it's a very, very dangerous period. This is a very dangerous period of time in our nation. And a big reason that it's dangerous is that we have a president that's grossly incompetent. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Speaker Johnson, why do you 
come here today. Speaker Johnson, 